Hi, I'm Brad. I'm an animator. I work at Edinburgh University. In the summer, I sort of go into hermit artist mode. I usually work on films of my own design. Yeah, they're, they're all on my website if you want to check it out. I want to get into your personal journey. You've definitely gone through different professional stages, especially because you went you went to SCAD as, as I did. I studied animation, obviously, in Savannah. Before that, I was, my undergrad degree was actually in communication. I didn't think I was good enough to be a professional artist. I didn't go for it. I didn't follow my dreams. But then... I thought I should probably follow my dreams, so I did. In Savannah, I learned about animation. I did a, a couple of stop motion projects, and I realized that I that was something I really liked. I liked the physicality of it, the sort of tactile sense that it has, the sort of idea that you could touch these objects. These are objects that exist in the real world, and they're physical, and they have physical properties or something about that that really drew me to that medium and I kind of got lucky I got I got hired at Will Vinton in I think 98 or 99 to do a show they were doing and, you know I was there for a couple years and, and I learned a lot and I did some other TV gigs and some other commercials and music videos and things for about you know three or four years and then Things kind of dried up in stop motion. There was a little lull between probably about 2002 and 2005 or so. There was not a lot of work in stop motion. So I actually finished my degree in Savannah, like, because I left, because I got this opportunity. So I left before I was done. And then I, and then I went back and finished. And I want to say about 2002 or three, I had another years worth of coursework to do there and I finished the master's degree and then I, I got a job teaching in Detroit and my, my family's from Michigan so that was that was an easy move to make that I could just sort of live at home and work. This this teaching gig at first was just one course. It didn't pay a lot, but that sort of snowballed into other things. I started doing other courses for them and I started doing courses for other colleges around the area. And then in 2004, I got hired here full time. And I've been here ever since in Edinburgh, Pennsylvania. Artistically, I've either been doing my own films and there's been, I don't know, four or five of them that I've done over the course of the last 10 years, plus any sort of freelance stuff. Of course, I directed two segments for Sesame Street. And so it's been kind of from grad student studying animation to working in the industry for a few years and then getting into teaching and just kind of staying here, largely because, you know, it's a steady, steady work, honestly. I love working with students. You know, I love seeing them grow and develop as artists, you know, it's really rewarding to, to see them go out and succeed. I believe in the work I'm doing here because it's relatively inexpensive. I think they're still paying too much, but, you know, our tuition here at Edinburgh is literally a fraction of what it would be at, well, Savannah, because we're public. I know you feel the pain. I got my students. bachelor's and my master's at SCAD, so yeah, the pain is real. <laughs> I'm, I'm right there with you, though. I like your Miss Piggy mod there. Oh, thank you. It's a... Uh... It's vintage. I don't That's know awesome. when it's... Oh, here it is. 1978. Yeah, it says the copyright on the side. Yeah, look at what some of these other places cost. I'm like, I don't understand. I mean, this, this education is more than a house. You're talking about like a training students to do a job that doesn't really pay the amount that they would need in order to pay off their student loans. So it's... Yeah. It's so strange. I mean, there's a disconnect there you know, between what these art schools are charging and like how much people actually earn. It's goofy because there's a, at least for us as, as animators or even stop motion has, has picked up a bit more over the last, uh, I don't know, what would you say decade or so? Yeah, since 2005 or so, I remember in 2005 getting a, an email from somebody who was, hey, we need animators for this new show, Robot Chicken. And I said, well, I'm, I'm here now, I was teaching. This is my first year at Edinburgh. Yeah. I didn't realize at the time that that was like a crossroads of life moment where I'm like, I can't come out there right now because I'm, I signed a contract until May here. And they're like, oh, we need people right now. 
And ever since then, it's picked up. There's work in it. There's there's three or four studios in in LA alone that are doing stop motion sort of continuously. Because for me, in VFX and animation, there there is work. But then you look at like people studying fine arts or something like that. Good luck. I don't know how you're gonna do it. Like it's tough for us. I can't imagine what it's like for y'all. Yeah, and that's what parents want. You know, when they come here to. They're shopping around for colleges for their high school students. They want to know that they have a chance of getting work. They're paying so much. I don't even know how I feel about it because I, you know, I taught in the past. Uh, you, you provided me that opportunity and I'll be teaching an online course at Drury. On one hand, like you said, I, I love seeing uh, the students and, and what they do and, and trying to help them out in that way. I don't know. My six-year-old is super into Ray Harryhausen right now. Wow. In fact... He made this. He made this little monster. I'm like, okay, you want to learn about art? I can show you a few things. The thing I always tell people: the first thing to look at is the price tag. Go someplace where you're not going to be paying more than you would pay for a house. Because nobody really, at the end of the day, cares where you went to school. It's like all about just your portfolio. So. If you go to a place that has decent instructors, then you can make your own way, you know, you can do your own art. Look up the faculty, look at what they do. Look up their website if they got one. If they're active, you know, I think that make that means they're a good teacher. If they're active art makers, that means that they love what they do. You do have that stability of the job, yet you're, you are still driven outside of uh, teaching. To, to constantly be creating or, or working on other things. What's the metamorphosis of that motivation and passion been over the years? I think it's just I love the process. In the case of stop motion, I love building miniature things and I love character animation. I never really saw myself as this great storyteller. Whenever I make a film, I'm really just giving myself an excuse to do character animation, which is what I really love. So that's why in a lot of my films, the performances are usually better than the story. Because the story is just an excuse to showcase the performances. <laughs> my next film that I do for my own is probably going to be digital 2D, just to teach myself that process. Because I've lost touch with Doom Boom and I don't really know it anymore. And all the students are using it and all the studios are using it. So I feel like I should relearn it. I, I used it in college, but that was years ago. Yeah, yeah. So when I'm designing a film, I'm also giving myself a challenge or trying to teach myself something because that's the only way to really learn something is to do it. For me personally, because eventually Katie and I, uh, my wife and I, we want to have a family, but I'm so, so driven. I think by very similar things you are to create outside of work. And I'm terrified that when I have kids, I won't have time to do that anymore, or I won't have the energy to do that anymore. But then I, you know, I do know artists who have families, like you are one of them. How does that work, being a father and being an artist? You just gotta, I guess, budget your time a lot. I mean, of course, I have a good situation because I, I get a lot of time off to do it. Full summer, get spring break. A lot of times I'll get four or five weeks December or January for that break. So that helps. You do slow down. The older you get, you know, you start to lose your energy. You know, I'll do it at least a couple hours a day, puppets or building set pieces for that or doing designs. I don't always get to that, but I, I kind of strive for that on an average. You know, it's, it is definitely like time consuming to have a family. It's very time consuming, but there's always a little bit of time in the day, you know, after the kids go to bed is a good time. The kids will go to bed at eight or nine. If it's a school night, they go to bed at like eight, eight thirty, And then I get a good two hours or so. I try to spend a little time reading and try to spend, spend some time watching movies. I try to spend some time playing video games too because I get inspiration from that. So I try to stay inspired. It's a balancing act. I don't know, I'm not dead yet. If you could travel back in time to Brad who's still in college and give yourself like big takeaway advice you've learned over the years that would really help yourself out, what would you what would you say? I probably if I had done anything different, I probably would have went for it sooner. Like I didn't do an undergrad degree in art because I didn't think I was good enough. Mm -hmm. I'd probably would say that. I would probably say just follow your dream, follow your passion. A lot of people evaluate how good they're going to be at art with how good they are currently. 
and it's, yeah. it's not always the case. Oh, that's so true. I see that all the time with students. I mean, it's the ones that stick to it. It's the yeah. ones that clearly love what they're doing, and they would they would do it regardless. Th those are the people that are successful. The people that genuinely love the the art form, the process. They're just driven to do. And I've seen a lot of really good artists who didn't end up being successful because they just didn't they just gave up or they they just they stopped doing it that's really the only way to fail is to stop doing it follow your dreams kids don't pay too much money for your education i, I don't know something's got to give with that though right i mean with education i mean something's got to give right they can't keep charging this much yeah you can go to almost any university any college and they, they all teach some form of animation or vis effects or filmmaking. And there aren't like a ton of jobs. Like it is still a relatively small industry. I moved from Montreal to Vancouver and there were people I knew when I showed up in Vancouver. It's like, wait, what? This is a different coast. How are you here? Relatively small percentage of our graduates actually end up working on movies or television. Like a lot of them are doing like smaller gigs where they, they still get to make art, they still get to use their skills, but it's not like the obvious thing. It's not like something everyone would see. It's either like a, an industrial video or a, a video for an app. It can go any way you want it to go, but it often goes every way you don't want it to go. <laughs> I didn't go to college thinking, I'm going to be a stop motion animator. Some people do that. You know, some people are like, I'm doing stop motion animation. That's what I'm doing. I don't know. That's something I just kind of realized that I had a talent for and I liked the process. So, yeah, what you end up doing isn't always what you started, but sometimes it is. It's more valuable to learn how to be content with what you've sort of unearthed while digging through your life than it is to decide exactly what you're going to do and then nothing else will please you. Life will take you where it takes you. Sometimes you're the driver and sometimes you're the passenger in this car of life. It's only like 1% of you are going to end up at Pixar. All right, Brad. It's been great. Thank you so All much. Right. Take care. Hey, thanks for watching that video. If you liked what you saw, give us a like. If you didn't, don't. <laughs>